guys, it's Dr. Deuce back again and today I'm bringing you a brand new series called The Beatmaker's Breakdown and in this series I'll be taking you through my process when making beats in Logic Pro X so let's get started Now there are a few very important considerations I make before I actually get started First thing is, who's my audience? Is it youngsters, teenagers, uh, 20 somethings or older more mature folks? That, of course, will influence the genre I'm going for. Is it a jazz thing, uh, R&B, gospel, house, hip-hop? Which, of course, will determine the tempo of the track. Now, for each genre, there are tempo ranges associated. So, for example, let's take hip-hop. Tempos could range from as low as 80 BPM all the way up to maybe 110, 115 BPM. Uh, techno could be from as slow as 120 BPM all the way up to uh, 160 BPM. And house, for example, could be from maybe 118 all the way up to 132, 135. Now it's important that let's say, for example, it was a house track I was doing, I wouldn't be setting the tempo to anything around 90 or I don't know, 88 BPM because it wouldn't have that house feel, house vibe. So it's really important that you understand the tempo ranges associated with different genres of music. Go onto Google and type uh, tempo ranges for different genres and you'll get some guidance on that. Now going back to your genre choice or the style in which you're going to be making a beat or i'll be making a beat the genre i choose will determine what my sound selection will be so for example if i'm making a house or a dance track it's very likely i'll be using some very electronic sounds whereas if i'm making a jazz track i'll be using more acoustic or sort of band related sounds in logic the developers have given you these templates with some presets which are kind of associated with different genres so it's definitely worth you experimenting with some of these templates because they're a great starting point for you however for me i tend to start with an empty project so i'm going to click empty project the next thing i do is create some software instruments so i'm going to create about four let's say the track i'm going to be making let's say it was an r&b kind of thing i would set my tempo let's see maybe around 95 for now now for me there are a number of different starting points which i take when i'm about to make a beat it could be a bass line that i've got rolling around in my head or some chords maybe a chord progression or maybe some drums it could be one of many different approaches but the main thing i do is i work in small chunks either four bars or eight bar sections so the first thing i'm going to do here is click on the cycle range strap and i'm going to stick to four bars for now then i'll be starting with my chord progression on this occasion so i'm going to be starting with this pad sound from the alchemy software instrument now incidentally alchemy is an incredibly powerful software instrument that comes as part of logic pro now there are some amazing software instrument manufacturers out there such as native instruments and so on um, however believe me alchemy is one of the most powerful software synths i've come across and it offers a, an incredible range of sounds and possibilities so i highly encourage you to check it out and before you go looking elsewhere see what the possibilities are with alchemy and of course you can reinforce that with other synths anyway back to the production now the chord progression i'm starting with today is as follows one of the most challenging things some of my students find when they're first being introduced to the beat making process is their ability to work with the click or the metronome. Now, to switch the metronome or click on, you just press K on the keyboard, okay? Now the metronome is what gives you the pulse, gives you the tempo and the pulse of the track. And it's important that if you're making beats, especially in contemporary music, that you try and stick to working with the metronome. So for those of you starting out or who struggle to stick to the metronome when you're recording, I highly recommend you practice playing along with the click before you start recording. So I'm just gonna run the click track and then play the progression along with the click.
That's one of the exercises I strongly recommend you do. So you get used to locking in with the click track and that will really enhance your production skills in the long run. Now, as you can see up here, you've got this symbol here, which is the metronome symbol. I mean, we can click it on and off or by using the letter K on the keyboard, you can toggle that on and off. However, there's also this one, two, three icon, which is the counting icon. And that's really useful and in fact, invaluable when it comes to recording. So you get a four beat counting prior to recording commencing. I always have this switched on and I highly recommend you make sure that's switched on as well. Okay, so let's get started with recording this first chord progression. I'm gonna press R on the keyboard. Okay, so now that I've recorded the chord progression, there are a few things that I like to do to tidy things up. Okay, so the first thing is to quantize all of these notes so that the chords all drop on the beat. To do this, I select all by pressing Command A and then pressing Q on the keyboard. Now I've set my quantize to 1 16th. So all of these notes have been quantized to the nearest 16th note, all right? Next thing I want to do is extend all of these notes so that they come all the way up to the very next chord. So we're going to go to edit, trim, and note end to selected notes, force legato. Make sure that everything is selected and hit shorten. Now everything has been stretched out so that each chord ends where the new chord begins. This one I'll stretch out myself and then I'll shave that off. Scissors tool. Okay, good. The next thing I'm going to do is because this is a pad, I want all of the velocities to be exactly the same. So if I was to hit this, you'll see now here, these are all the different velocity levels for each of these notes. I want them to be all equal. So to do that, the key command is command nine. Then you go up to here, you go to fixed velocities. Let's try 40. Yeah, 40 is better. Okay. And the final thing I'm going to do, so I want each of these chords to last for just three beats and then one beat of decay. So I'll go to here, delete this, select this, and this one. Okay, let's have a listen to that. Lovely, liking that a lot. So the next thing I'm gonna be laying down on this track is a bass line that I came up with. And the bass line goes something like this. Okay, now I'm gonna lay this down over eight bars. So I need to extend the existing loop up to eight bars and I want to duplicate this part. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, click, hold, drag, and drop. Okay, that's how you duplicate a region. So now the pad section is running for eight bars instead of four. Now I'll record my bass line. I'll press letter R on the keyboard and wait for the counting. Let's go. Great. 
Okay, so now that the baseline has been recorded, the next thing I'm going to do is do some tidying up as I did before with the keyboard pad. I'm going to start off by quantizing all of the notes. So it's Command A and then Q on the keyboard. That will quantize things. Make sure that everything is set to legato so nothing overlaps. So I'm going to go back to here, edit, and we're going to go to trim. Uh, note end to selected notes for legato and now you can see everything is butted up against the following note and the last thing I'm going to do is set the velocity I want all of the notes to have the same velocity so this is command 9 to get this window up and I'm going to set the velocity this time to probably let's try 50 I don't want too much attack um, on these notes so let's have a listen to that last thing I'm going to do is make an adjustment to these last two notes. This is often something I do when I'm producing. After recording the part, I might have another idea um, and I go into the piano roll to make some edits. So rather than using the G1 here, I'm going to set this to... I'm going to go to D sharp and I'll set this one to... I'll set that to D. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add a bit of movement in the piece. I haven't added any drums yet, but just a kind of a bit of a pulsing movement within the, the track. So I'm going to go for a mallet and let's see, maybe the marimba. Let's have a listen to that. Yep. And that's quite a nice sound. Hopefully that should cut through. I mean, with EQ and when it comes to mixing down, I'll make sure that there's enough space, the frequency ranges to allow this to shine through. So I'm going to use this marimba sound. And the chord I'm going to play is I'm just going to hold a D minor chord. Okay. Um, now, what I want to show you here, this is quite a nice little trick you can use when you want to add a bit of pulsing in your in your production. You go to the MIDI effects and switch on the arpeggiator. And if we were to play the chord now, you have, have a listen to this. Okay, sounds pretty cool. I'm going to give a variation. Let's go up to number two. Okay, that's nice. And I'm going to extend the octave range to two octaves. Great. So let's try recording that um, and let's see what we come up with. Okay, so again, it's R on the keyboard to record and wait for the count in. sounded okay. Um, let me close this for now and quantize these notes. Command A to select all, Q on the keyboard and I'm going to set the velocities again. Let's try that. sounding good and I'm going to just put a stereo delay on. Let's see how that sounds. That's cool. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of attack off and let's see how this sounds. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 
Okay, that can definitely work. Sounding good. Okay, so all that's left to do now is just add some drums and one or two extra bits and then arrange the track. So we're going to leave it there for this episode and in the next I'll be adding the drums and one or two other bits to really add some more flavour to the overall production. Hopefully you've learned something from this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, it's always great hearing from you and I'll be back real soon with more. This is Dr. Deuce. Take care. Peace.